Well, I've just finished up the sails for my Haven 12 and a half. And you can see I've laid out here the jib and the mainsail, and all in this amazingly beautiful space. Well, last summer, my boot camp uh, boat builders and I were on a retreat out in Cape Cod, and we visited a sailmaker. One of the things that stuck with me was that he said when he first got started, he didn't have a place to lay his sails out and that he would rent church basements. So that's exactly what I did, is I went to the Eureka Christian Church and asked if I could use their parish hall. Well, as you can see, it's a pretty amazing space. Not only is it beautiful to work in, but it's warm in here. Now, the other thing about a church is they have no lack of a number of folding tables. So I was able to put up several folding tables in order to do some of the management of the fabric as I was sewing the sails. Now before we get started, I would invite you to watch this video or re-watch this video, which is episode 20 of season three. And it's when I built the small sail for the dinghy that I had built last summer. In it, I talk about some of the basic part names of the sail and some very basic steps. Now, some of those basic steps I won't be showing during this, so it'd be a really good idea to refresh yourself with some of those things. So let's get started by building the jib. I'm using a sail kit from Sailrite, made specifically for a Haven 12 and a half. It'll also work for some sound 12 and a half. All of the parts come accurately cut and marked. The kit includes all of the notions, threads, grommets, etc. that you will need to complete the sails. It also comes with very detailed instructions on how to construct the sail. So we have here the instructions for the gaff and the one for the jib. And it not only covers some of the basic things about the sail, but it also covers things like basic sewing. So it's very uh, instructive and it's best to read through these instructions all the way before you get started. Um, so in addition to the instructions, both sails come with a plan, sail plan here, that has all of the parts numbered. So we're starting with the jib here, and you can see there are six panels that make up the jib. And the first thing we're gonna do are add these patches. And they're basically five layers of cloth that reinforce the tack, the clue, and the head. Now it's easier to attach all of these because you need to sew each one of these seams individually. So by doing it before we assemble the sail, we don't have to deal with all of this material to be using it on a small piece like here at the head. So I'm gonna be making these sail patches first and attaching them to the panels. Now you'll see here at the clue that the patch goes over two panels. So in this case, I will need to attach these two panels together in order to sew the clue. The first step is to attach the two panels with double stick basting tape. Then stitching the panels together using two rows of zigzag stitches. So once we have these patches attached, we can then start assembling the different panels. After the panels are all attached, I get started with the leech of the sail. The concern here is to finish and protect this very important edge. The leech will receive a double hem. And I create a simple double fold, a hem, at the trailing edge of the sail to reinforce it to prevent raveling. The second fold will also cover the raw edges of the corner patches. The corner patches should be on the same side of the sail as the hem. The 
hem receives one row of zigzag stitch. This sail requires two short battens to prevent flutter along the edge. Two inch wide pockets with the tape provided will accommodate the battens. I'll install two battens along the leech. The top batten will be 9 inches long and the bottom batten will be 12 inches long. The batten pocket tape should be twice the length plus 3 inches or a total of 21 and 27 inches respectfully. At the ends of the tapes, I folded over one inch seams and I then fastened them with basting tape. There's a small mark plotted on the sailcloth to indicate the proper position for the batten pocket. Using that mark, I then basted the pockets in place on the sail, making sure that the open ends were on the leech. Then put a zigzag stitch on both of the edges of the two batten pockets, making sure that I back stitch on each one of the pockets at the beginning and at the end of the pocket to lock in the stitch. The kit came with two 12 inch battens, so one of them I had to shorten to 9 inches. I sanded the end and then it just slid right in that pocket. I then turned my attention to finishing off the foot of the sail. The kit came with a 3 inch wide Dacron tape that had been pre folded down the center. I basted the tape to the foot of the sail. I then ran a row of stitches on the inside of the tape, as in this illustration. I then, after folding it over, ran a stitch on the outside edges of the tape, as it is in this illustration. I then finally turned to finishing the protecting leading or luffed edge of the sail. In this case, I used the 4 inch wide Dacron tape that was provided with the kit. It too had been folded in half. So the next step here on the left, you can see I've got this Dacron tape on there. And after I basted it, I uh, then went by and stitched close to the inside of that crease. So now what I need to do is to install this wire reinforcing for the luft, which will go in here like that. So the step will be <clears throat> is I'm going to go by and put a little piece of basting tape every once in a while to hold the wire where it belongs, <clears throat> which will be right in that crease like that. And then I will stitch along here uh, right in the middle. And then after that's in, then I'll be able to put another stitch out here on the edge.
This stainless steel wire, also known as a bolt rope, will prevent the overstretching of the luft of the sail and, when properly tensioned, it will eliminate sagging between jib hanks or snaps. Well, that's pretty much it for the machine sewing on the jib. Now, there's some handwork I'll need to do on the tack and on the head of the sail. So that's what we're going to do next. Using some wax Dacron twine, I began down at the tack of the sail. And making some stitches about every quarter of an inch, I went all the way around the bolt rope. After completing one row of stitches, I then went back through the same holes and put a double stitch to really reinforce the tack end of the bolt rope. I then installed a number one spur grommet into the tack. Using the seal making twine, I then stitched around the grommet and the thimble of the boat rope about 20 to 25 times. I then did this very same procedure to the head of the sail.
The tack and the head corners of the sail are to be dressed with a pearl gray leather. It should extend about one to three inches into the sail. After I determined the shape of the dressing, I applied some basting tape to hold it in place while I was stitching it. Using an awl, I pre-punched holes about a quarter of an inch apart. I used the wax Dacron sail twine doubled to attach the leather to the sail. Starting with the inside edges of the leather, I fastened it using a simple flat stitch, moving all the way down one way and then back the other way. In this frame, you can see where I applied number one spur grommets along the foot. They were spaced about eight inches apart. You can also see along the bolt rope where I put a flat stitch using my zipper foot. For the open edges, I used a basic baseball stitch. This type of stitch helped draw the edges together. A baseball stitch requires two needles, one on each end of the thread. The action is like lacing up a shoe. I dressed the head the exact same way that I did for the tack. Once I snipped off the ends of these Dacron threads, I took a little heat and burned them so that they would not unravel. The next step is to attach the jib hanks, which go here on the luft. And what the jib hank does is that it allows the sail then to run up and down the forestay. And so the forestay would go through this hole here. So it, the kit came with these little plastic hanks that will clip over the bolt rope here, which you can see will go through that little hole, and then it gets attached with this screw. So there are seven of them that go along there. Now I've elected not to use those plastic ones, but to use these Swedish hanks. Um, I think they're a little classier and I like that they're bronze. Now they clip on here around the bolt rope like so, but it will require a grommet to be put in there. So that's my next step is I'm going to put seven grommets along the luft. The hanks go 19 and 5 eighths inches apart. and they require a number zero grommet. So the way the hank works is there's a little spring-loaded pin in here, so that will get it so that you can go over the forestay. Now this part of the hank should go towards the starboard side of the sail and clasp on there like that. This uh, metal block under there and then it's just a matter of flattening that. That completes the jib for my Haven 12 and a half footer. 
Next week, I'll show the construction of the gaffed mainsail. So until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on The Art of Boat Building.